Hello, everybody. I have a computer retail store in Multiplan Center. Uh, this is one, um, uh, one of the uh, two computer retail stores in Dhaka, uh, retail centers in Dhaka. And of about 500 stores, I am the only uh, women's sole uh, proprietor. And uh, uh, I say this is not in arrogance, uh, but with pride. Uh, uh, well, uh, it was not very easy, uh, but I'm here in front of you at a conference that will be viewed by thousands of hundreds of people online, both home and abroad. We are living in a country where many people, are, many people use computer only to listen to music, you all may know. Many women do not touch electronic device, fearing it may give them an electronic, electric shock. And women running a technology business is unbelievable in the society. Though some women are successfully doing business in traditional sectors like boutique and handicrafts, an insignificant percentage of women are seen in the technology sector. I am in that business where women are not welcomed, appreciated, and supported. In a situation like this, I would like to share my experience with a hope that more women are encouraged to come into business in general and in technology in particular. My story. Because of my activism background in my university, uh, university days, like many of my idealistic peers who wanted to change the society, became a journalist. That was in year 2002. Some of you may know, as a journalist around that time, it was, uh, there was no job security at that time so it was a rocky road for the next six years. For one assignment, I received a payment of uh, $1,000. That was a huge money as a journalist. And this was all the money I had in the world. I knew I had to use it in such a way as to make my life a bit easier, a bit financially secure to live. I was a good computer user, but uh, didn't know much about hardware, software, mm -hmm. how they functioned. A close friend of mine suggested uh, we would go, to go into business, and uh, seeing no other options, I agreed. But the partnership didn't work out. It lasted less than two months. And by the time I had already invested all the savings I had, I had no other option than to plunge into business and learn by doing and failing. I learned sales and marketing in a hard way, one customer at a time. I failed many times. I did it again by learning, doing, and failing, and again doing. And I was very pers persistent. I was confident. One of the key things I learned was customer service, especially after sales service. Usually, many businessmen just want to make the sale and uh, just forget about the after-sale service. They don't care about the customers. The goal is just to make the sale. This was a big problem for many clients. As an entrepreneur, I saw my fortune. I began to serve society through my business, one customer at a time. They came with many problems. Clients came to me with unbelievable problems. The computer monitor doesn't work and I saw the monitor cable was not plugged into the PC. <laughs> the mouse, mouse doesn't fit to anywhere. He bought a PS2, PS2 mouse when he needed a USB, USB mouse for his laptop. Many clients commented they, sh they shouldn't have purchased it from a women vendor. I understood what their frustrations were, so I tried my best to gain their confidence. I remember those days when hardware distributors didn't allow me even for a few hours of credit facility. Business, uh, businessmen have syndicated network to share credit, capital, and business information. I was outsider to them, so I lagged behind. A fellow businessman told me once, even God cannot read women's mind. How can I trust you? <laughs> well, I said, I said, trust me. He trusted me. I don't know why. Even God didn't know, I think. And I proved myself trustworthy 
people don't question my word anymore. In four years of my business career, I attempted several times to recruit women in my business with a goal to have my team with at least 50% of women, and it was not a pleasant experience. When I would send a female marketing executive or support engineer to a client, they complained they were thoroughly integrated by the clients as to why and how they were working in a computer business being a, being a woman. I tried to console them, inspire them to fight back, but couldn't guarantee when people will change their minds towards women. But unfortunately, I failed to motivate them to be persistent. They gave up. As a business woman, I, I have to give my business card to random people. My mobile phone number is public, so I frequently receive important phone calls outside of my office hours. I have to, talk, I have to take these calls as they may lead to a sale. Some of these phone calls are not sales calls. They are harassment calls. Some are from business competitors. Some are from men who suffer from, uh, who suffer from, how shall I say it? They suffer from alor dosh. In English, uh, let me translate, let me translate. Uh, in English, it may, alor dosh may be translated as uh, potato complex, but <laughs> there is no complex in, there is no problem, problems with potato. The problem is with a system that allows harassers to hide behind anonymity. Let me speak a little bit on harassment on, on women, especially using technology. There are websites, social network, networking sites, email and mobile phones, which are frequently used to threaten, annoy, and disturb women. Bangladesh has enacted a cybercrime law, and there has not been a single execution of the law to protect women from harassment, harassment using technology. Mobile phone companies who have a large number of women subscribers can take a step forward to safeguard their female clients who receive abusive calls from unknown numbers. Some of the mobile companies have call block service, but it's, it's costly, limited by how many numbers you can block, and the harassers have many numbers at their disposal. I tried to report anonymous calls to the companies, but I found it complicated and useless. I think the solution is not impossible. It just takes a little attention and a service, which can also add value to the company's goodwill. We also need a local, local team that, face, um, that Facebook can rely on to evaluate and report abusive pages and, and contents. Now, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, about women's power, uh, what I believe. Women are very powerful. It's not a belief, it's, it's a fact. We are as powerful as men. Women have proven to play the most crucial role during any disaster. We give birth of children. With the power of our affection, we raise them to be strong and moral citizens on the world. Women have enormous power in their mind and body, but we have to believe in it first. Peace cannot be established if more than half of the population is discriminated, oppressed, unacknowledged. Isn't this obvious to all? Yeah? There are barriers and still I can see the opportunities. I believe women will take the challenge and make it possible as we can see in the history of civilization. For women who are interested in becoming entrepreneurs, I have some, um, some humble suggestions. I think we should believe, believe in ourselves and fix our aim first. And you are a human being with unlimited possibilities. You explore them, underline your knack and expertise, prepare yourself. Don't pay attention to what people say behind your back. It was early 19th century when Bengali philosopher Begum Rokya paved the way for women into, uh, women into education. Time is easier now. Many women can move about society unhindered. Speak loud so that people can hear you. It may be difficult when you begin, but this is possible that you can make it. When you create something which brings good to society, people will, of course, welcome you. Don't think you have to be perfect in the kitchen and home. Women spend a lot of time, I think, I think more than half of their lives in the kitchen. Well, that's, that, that's necessary, but women have many traditional roles in the family. But those roles, uh, roles shouldn't get most of your attention. Make your family members understand this and participate in it. 
Have a strong social network with people who know your work and support your work. This is a space where you can breathe during tough situations. They can also support you with ideas and connections. Read books, journals, relevant websites to see how the world is moving, where the trend is going. Last one, don't give up easily. Things will always be tough, but if you stick it out, you will, you will overcome them. Besides, as you resist, it will develop you to be stronger and smarter. My next, next project is a real-life MBA. Starting as a hardware retailer, my company has now focused to bring more women to technology workforce. We have recently expanded to include a training center. One of our focus is to increase technology uses for women. This will not only empower them, but empower them to compete in the global marketplace for entrepreneurship and employment. As you predict, more technology outsourcing work coming into Bangladesh. We will need to fully utilize our local workforce, more than half of which are women, in order to maximize this future opportunity. Women, after completing their graduation, do not know where and how they can look for their jobs. We would like to mentor them as to how they can prepare themselves to compete in the marketplace. Women graduates lack IT skills. They can be more effective finding the right job through IT training. Women who wish to start business can come to our real life MBA program to develop their skills, develop a better business network, nurturing and flourishing their dream, how they can get financial assistance, how to gather and manage a workforce, how to develop them, how to market and sell and manage finance and accounting. And wish me good luck in my journey. Thank you very much.